Amitabha, also known as Amida, or Amitayus, is a celestial Buddha according to the scriptures of Mahayana Buddhism. Amitabha is the principal Buddha in Pure Land Buddhism, a branch of East Asian Buddhism. In Vahyana Buddhism, Amitabha is known for his longevity attribute, magnetizing Western attributes of discernment, pure perception and purification of the aggregates with a deep awareness of emptiness of all phenomena. According to these scriptures, Amitabha possesses infinite merit resulting from good deeds over countless past lives as a bodhisattva named Dharmakara. Amitabha means infinite light, and Amitayus means infinite life, so Amitabha is also called the Buddha of immeasurable light and life. Chapter 1, Doctrine Chapter 1 Section 1, Attainment of Buddhahood According to the larger Sutra of Immeasurable Life, Amitabha was, in very ancient times and possibly in another system of worlds, a monk named Dharmakara. In some versions of the Sutra, Dharmakara is described as a former king who, having come into contact with Buddhist teachings through the Buddha Loksvara Raja, renounced his throne. He then resolved to become a Buddha and to create a Buddha etc. possessed of many perfections. These resolutions were expressed in his 48 vows, which set out the type of pure land Dharmakara aspired to create, the conditions under which beings might be born into that world, and what kind of beings they would be when reborn there. In the versions of the Sutra widely known in China, Vietnam, Korea, and Japan, Dharmakara's eighteenth vow was that any being in any universe desiring to be reborn into Amitabha's pure land and calling upon his name with sincerity, even as few as ten times will be guaranteed rebirth there. His nineteenth vow promises that he, together with his bodhisattvas and other blessed Buddhists, will appear before those who, at the moment of death, call upon him. This openness and acceptance of all kinds of people has made belief in Pure Lands one of the major influences in Mahayana Buddhism. Pure Land Buddhism seems to have first become popular in Gandhara, from where it spread to China and influenced by Taoists and Confucian philosophy before spreading to Central and East Asia. The Sutra goes on to explain that Amitabha, after accumulating great merit over countless lives, finally achieved Buddhahood and created a pure land called Sukhavati. Sukhavati is situated in the uttermost west, beyond the bounds of our own world. By the power of his vows, Amitabha has made it possible for all who call upon him to be reborn into this land, there to undergo instruction by him in the Dharma and ultimately become Bodhisattvas and Buddhas in their turn. From there, these same Bodhisattvas and Buddhas return to our world to help yet more people while still residing in his land of Sukhavati, whose many virtues and joys are described. Chapter 1 Section 2 References in Sutras The basic doctrines concerning Amitabha, and his vows are found in three canonical Mahayana texts. Longa Sukhavativua Sutra Amitayodhyana Sutra Shorter Sukhavativua Sutra Amitabha is the Buddha of comprehensive love. He lives in the West and works for the enlightenment of all beings. His most important enlightenment technique is the visualization of the surrounding world as a paradise. Those who see his world as a paradise awaken his enlightenment energy. The world can be seen as a paradise by a corresponding positive thought or by sending light to all beings. After the Amitabha doctrine, one can come to paradise, if they visualize at their death Amitabha in the heaven over their head, think his name as a mantra and leave the body as a soul through the crown chakra. Chapter 1 Section 3, Vahiyana Buddhism Amitabha is also known in Tibet, Mongolia, and other regions where Tibetan Buddhism is practiced. In the highest Yogatantra of Tibetan Buddhism, Amitabha is considered one of the five Jnani Buddhas, who is associated with the Western direction and the skanda of Samjna, the aggregate of distinguishing and the deep awareness of individualities. His consort is Pandravasinai. His two main disciples are the Bodhisattvas Varapani and Avalokiteshvara, the former to his left and the latter to his right. In Tibetan Buddhism, there exist a number of famous prayers for taking rebirth in Sukhavati. One of these was written by Jersam Kopa on the request of Manjushri. 
The Ponchan Lamas and Shamapas are considered to be emanations of Amitabha. He is frequently invoked in Tibet either as Amitabha, especially in the Poa practices or as Omitayus, especially in practices relating to longevity and preventing an untimely death. In Shingon Buddhism, Amitabha is seen as one of the thirteen Buddhas to whom practitioners can pay homage. Shingon, like Tibetan Buddhism, also uses special devotional mantras for Amitabha, though the mantras used differ. Amitabha is also one of the Buddhas featured in the womb realm Mandala used in Shingon practices, and sits to the west, which is where the pure land of Amitabha is said to dwell. Chapter 1 Section 3 Subsection 2 Mantras Amitabha is the center of a number of mantras in Vahyana practices. The Sanskrit form of the mantra of Amitabha is, which is pronounced in its Tibetan version as Om Ami Dewari. His mantra in Shingon Buddhism is on Amirita Tizi Ikara on Japanese, which represents the underlying Indic form Om Amritatehe Haraham. In addition to using the mantras listed above, many Buddhist schools invoke Amitabha's name in a practice known as Nyanfo in Chinese and Nembutsu in Japanese. Chapter 2 Names in Various Languages The proper form of Amitabha's name in Sanskrit is Amitabha, masculine, and the nominative singular is Amitabha. This is a compound of the Sanskrit words Amita and Abha. Consequently, the name is to be interpreted as he who possesses light without bound, he whose splendor is infinite. The name Amitayus is also used for the Sambhogakaya aspect of Amitabha, particularly associated with longevity. He is mostly depicted sitting and holding in his hands a vessel containing the nectar of immortality. In Tibetan Buddhism, Amitayus is also one of the three deities of long life. Amitayus being a compound of Amita and Ayas, and so means he whose life is boundless. In Chinese, pronounced Emichufo, is the Chinese pronunciation for the Sanskrit name of the Amitabha Buddha. The Emi Tuo is the transliteration of the Sanskrit word Amita which means boundless. Fo is the Chinese word for Buddha. In Vietnamese, Korean, and Japanese, the same Chinese characters used for Amitabha are used to represent his name, though they are pronounced slightly differently. Vietnamese, Adida Fat. Korean, Amita Bool. Japanese, Amida Butsu. In addition to transliteration, the name Amitabha has also been translated into Chinese using characters which, taken together, convey the meaning infinite light, in the same fashion, the name Omitayus has been translated as. These translated names are not, however, very commonly used. In Japanese, Amitabha is also called Amida Nyorai. In Tibetan, Amitabha is called Wiley, Odpag Med, Tichel, Opakmand in its reflex form as Omitayus, Wiley, Chadpag Med, Tichel, Tsepkum. They are iconographically distinct. Chapter 3 Iconography. When in the descending standing position, Amitabha is often shown with left arm bare and extended downward with thumb and forefinger touching, with the right hand facing outward also with thumb and forefinger touching. The meaning of this mudra is that wisdom is accessible to even the lowest beings, while the outstretched hand shows that Amitabha's compassion is directed at the lowest beings, who cannot save themselves. When not depicted alone, Amitabha is often portrayed with two assistant bodhisattvas, usually Avalokiteshvara on the right and Mahastamaprapta on the left. This iconography is known as an Amitabha triad, and is especially common in Japanese and Korean art. Amitabha is said to display 84,000 auspicious and distinguishing marks reflecting his many virtues. Amitabha can often be distinguished by his mudra. Amitabha is often depicted, when shown seated, displaying the meditation mudra at Kotoku in or the exposition mudra, while the earth-touching mudra is reserved for a seated Gautama Buddha alone. He can also be seen holding a lotus in his hands while displaying the meditation mudra. There is a difference between Omitayus and Amitabha. Omitayus, the Buddha of infinite life, and Amitabha, the Buddha of infinite light, are essentially identical, being reflective images of one another. Sutras in which Gautama Buddha expounds the glories of Sukhavati, the Pure Lands, 
speak of the presiding Buddha sometimes as Amitabha and sometimes as Omitayus. When depicted as Omitayus he is depicted in fine clothes and jewels and as Amitabha in simple monk's clothing. They are also simply known as Amida in the Chinese and Japanese tradition. The image of the gold-colored statue in the article is of Omitayus as he is wearing a five-pointed crown, which is the easiest way to distinguish them. Omitayus, is an emanation of Amitabha. Amitabha is the head of the lotus family dot in Vahiana, Amitabha, is the most ancient of the Dhyani Buddhas. He is of red color originating from the red seed syllable Hari. He represents the cosmic element of Sanjana. His vehicle is the peacock. He exhibits Samadhi Mudra his two palms folded face up, one on top of the other, lying on his lap. The lotus is his sign. When represented on the stupa, he always faces toward west. He is worshipped thinking that one can have salvation. Chapter 4, Archaeological Origins The first known epigraphic evidence for Amitabha is the bottom part of a statue found in Govindnagar, Pakistan and now located at Government Museum, Mathura. The statue is dated to the 26th year of the reign of Huviska i.e., sometime in the latter half of the 2nd century during the Kushan Empire, and was apparently dedicated to Amitabha Buddha by a family of merchants. The first known sutra mentioning Amitabha is the translation into Chinese of the Pratyutpana Samadhi Sutra by the Kushan monk Lakshima around 180. This work is said to be at the origin of pure land practices in China and was integrated with and influenced by with the already established Taoist and Confucian principles and practices. The appearance of such literature and sculptural remains at the end of the second century suggests that the doctrine of Amitabha probably developed during the first and second centuries. Furthermore, there are sculptures of Amitabha in Jhani Mudras as well as bronzes of Amitabha in Abhaya Mudra from the Gandhara era of the 1st century, suggesting the popularity of Amitabha during that time. One of the last prayer busts of Amitabha can be found in the trademark black stone of the Pala Empire, which was the last Buddhist empire of India, and lost its influence in the 12th century due to Muslim conquests on the Indian subcontinent.